Hello and welcome everyone to Varsity Tutors, where today marks the 109th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic, an event that has forever changed and paved the way we see things like emergency protocols, training requirements, and maritime safety as a whole. And we are so thrilled to have Heather Pressman, Director of Learning and Engagement at the Molly Brown House Museum, rejoining us to delve into the story of the Titanic and some of its main characters and notable features. Now, before I hand it off to Heather, I wanna make sure we are prepared to learn and collaborate as much as possible in this live lesson. So I have just a few things for us to keep in mind. Today's class will feature a live interactive game where you'll have the opportunity to choose a team and test your listening skills while participating in a game much like one played on the Titanic, but without having to brave any treacherous waters along the way. So feel free to use the chat panel on the right-hand side of your screen to participate in today's activity and to ask Heather any questions you might happen to have. And while today's lesson will be full of facts and history behind the Titanic, if you do happen to have more questions we don't cover, not to worry, we'll have about 10 or 15 minutes at the close of the lesson specifically set aside for Q&A with Heather. You'll also want to be sure that you have your cameras handy because toward the end of the lesson, we'll have an opportunity to lean into the screen and pose for a selfie. And if you tag Varsity Tutors and the Molly Brown House Museum on Instagram, you'll have an opportunity to win a three month subscription to VT Plus as well as a free Titanic prize pack. I'll provide a few more details about the prize and the specifics on how to enter toward the end of today's lesson. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on over to your instructor for today, Heather Pressman. Hello, I'm so excited to be back. Um, so today we're going to be learning about what happened to Titanic um, on that fateful night 109 years ago. So, um, yeah, I was gonna say, can you start the slides? <laughs> um, all right, so before we really get started, let's find out who knows what happened to the Titanic. So we've got a, a quick little poll that will pop up. So it struck was struck by a meteor, it hit an iceberg. Uh, there was a fire which burned through the bottom, the hole of the boat, um, or shots were fired and hit the side of the ship causing a leak. So go ahead and, and drop your choice into the chat there. So A, it was struck by a meteor, B, it hit an iceberg, C, there was a fire, or D, there were shots fired. So we've got lots of answers coming in. Have a feeling that most of you guys are going to get this right. <laughs> lots, lots of, lots of B's, lots of C's. All right, maybe just a few more seconds. All right, so the majority of you said that it was B, that it hit an iceberg, and you are correct. Um, so I'm not just going to sit here today, like Haley said, and tell you about Titanic. Um, you're gonna have a chance to prove that you were listening by playing a trivia game. Um, there's There will be three rounds of the game. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the history of the Titanic and then we'll play the game for a little bit and then I'll tell you a little bit more and then we'll play a little bit more and so on. <clears throat> um, so again, there will be three, three rounds. So the game we're gonna be playing, it's called Shuffleboard. Um, Shuffleboard has been a popular game in Europe since before the 1600s. So it's a really old game. Um, it was originally called Shovelboard um, and it's a pretty simple game. Um, so we're obviously going to be playing a, a virtual version of it, um, but it is a it was a favorite activity on board luxury ocean liners, um, and it was a game played by many Titanic passengers. So um, we're gonna the way you're gonna do this is uh, you'll get you'll put your answers in and you'll uh, we'll score the points and then figure out which team won. But first, you have to choose a team. <laughs> so you can choose from the following. We've got six different options here. You can be on Team Margaret Brown, Team Captain Smith, Team Thomas Andrews. So he was the Irish shipbuilder uh, who helped design and build the Titanic. Um, Bruce Ismay would be Team D. He was the managing director of the White Star Line. Um, e, Madeline Astor, she was a first class passenger. Or F, Jack Phillips. He was one of the wireless or radio um, operators. So go ahead and drop your team choice into the chat um, and get everybody sorted out. Um, 
I don't think you can go wrong with any of these. They're all uh, interesting characters, interesting people. Um, some of them lived, some of them did not. So we've got a kind of a, a balance between the two. Um, I'm not going to tell you who, who did and who didn't at this point. You'll have to wait. <laughs> um, all right. So it looks like we're pretty close to everybody choosing a team. So um, let's get started. So remember, pay close attention because you're going to need to know the information um, that I'm telling you as we play the game. All right, so in 1898, a struggling author named Morgan Robertson wrote a novel about a fabulous Atlantic liner larger than any ship ever built. Um, Robertson loaded his ship with rich and famous people and then wrecked it on a cold day in April um, on an iceberg. The name of Robertson's ship in this book was the Titan. So 14 years later, oh, did I miss a slide? It's okay. Um, so 14 years later, a British shipping company named the White Star Line um, built a steamer that was remarkably like the one in Robertson's book. Um, the White Star Line named its ship Titanic. So both ships were similar in speed, size, number of passengers, um, and neither ship had enough lifeboats, interestingly, for everyone. Um, but this was not important because everyone thought this ship was unsinkable. Uh, the Aramis Titanic was built in Belfast, Ireland, and was owned by the White Star Line. Roy RMS um, stands for Royal Mail Steamer, since the ship had a contract to carry mail for the United States and England. It took 3,000 men three years to build. Uh, the Titanic was launched on May 31st, 1911, so that was just the basic ship. Um, it still needed furniture and other things to make passenger life comfortable. The ship cost $7.5 million to build and equip, and that was in 1911 dollars. The Titanic was 92 feet wide and 882 and a half feet long. That's the length of almost three football fields if you put them end to end. Um, when it was built, it was the largest movable man-made object in the world. Um, it didn't hold that record for very long, obviously. <laughs> um, from the keel, which is the bottom of the boat, to the top of the funnels, it was 175 feet tall. Um, Titanic had four funnels and two masts. Um, only three of the funnels actually worked, though. Um, the fourth one is a, is a fake smokestack. Um, Haley, can you actually go back one slide? Uh, actually, another one. Sorry, I lied. <laughs> so that first one um, that shows the. Oh, never mind. We're going to go back too far. Okay, sorry about that. I thought I had a different slide, a different picture in there. Um, but yeah, so the fourth one is a was a fake smokestack. Um, it was actually put there to make the ship look bigger. Um, so if you go forward again, sorry, Haley. Um, so these are the boilers. They were almost they were almost 16 feet across. So if you look in the very very back of this picture, you see those two little black dots. Those are actually humans. <laughs> um, these were huge huge things. Um, there were 29 of them on board the Titanic. So what these were for is that workers would put coal into the boilers, and then the coal would heat up, um, which would boil something. So what do you think of this boiling? What do you boil at home? Why don't we go ahead and go ahead and drop some, some thoughts into the chat? Um, so what do you boil at home? Could be a lot of things. Curious to see what, what you guys <laughs> put in there. Um, I see water, I see soup, pudding, interesting. Um, okay, a lot of a lot of water. You guys are you guys are spot on. Um, so you're right. So water, that's the the main thing that uh, most of us boil is water, um, unless we're in the middle of cooking a recipe. Um, and the, the boiling water would create steam that would turn the engines, and then smoke from the coal would go up and out through those smokestacks. Um, the engines, as you can imagine, based on the size of these boilers, were huge. Um, they were actually the size of a three-story house. Um, Almost 900 crew members were hired to work on the ship. 
um, as stewards, lookouts, um, the guys working in the engine room, you know, shoveling all that coal, um, all sorts of different jobs that, that people had. But 900 people for this one ship just to, just to work on the ship. There's the picture I was thinking of. <laughs> so this is the Titanic. Uh, the Titanic sailed on her maiden voyage at noon on April 10th, 1912. It left from South Southampton, England. Um, its destination was New York City. Um, they were going to stop briefly to pick up passengers in France and in Ireland. Um, the journey to the United States from England was supposed to, you know, on average took about two weeks for most other other ships. Um, today, it's about a six hour plane ride from England to New York, so not terribly long. Um, Titanic was designed to be the fastest ship afloat at that time. Um, the voyage from Southampton to New York was supposed to only take seven days, so half the amount of time that it would take on another ship. The other thing about Titanic was that it was very luxurious. Um, this is a picture of a first class cabin. Um, first class passengers paid between 30 English pounds and 870 English pounds for a cabin that could hold between one and three people. So that may not, uh, oh, our pool's not in there. Um, Sorry guys, I don't know what's going on with this slide. <laughs> there we go. So how much in today's money would that 30 to 870 pounds be? Um, how much do you think it would be in today's money? So we're gonna go ahead and, and drop again your answers into that, that chat box there. So A would be $1,500, B, $5,000, C, $12,000, or D, $31,000. So how much do you think 870 pounds, the upper end, um, how much would that be in today's money? So again, option A is $1,500, option B is $5,000, option C is $12,000, and option D is $31,000. And the answer is actually D. So it was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money <laughs> to get one of those fancy first class cabins. Um, so the, the range, so remember it was a 30 pound to 870 pounds. Um, so it would be between 1100 and $31,000 would be that, that modern day range. Um, Margaret Brown was a first class passenger um, who boarded, or you might know her as Molly, um, but she boarded the Titanic in France. So she was one of the people who got on on one of those those stops they made. Um, other other passengers, um, first class passengers brought with them maids, valets, children's nurses, um, those sorts of folks also accompanied some of the, the wealthy ladies and gentlemen in first class. Um, Margaret did not have anybody with her. All right, so the Titanic had some other unusual things that some of the other ships didn't. Um, it had a full gymnasium, which you can see on the bottom right there. Um, it had a Turkish bath, it had a saltwater swimming pool, um, it had um, a racquetball court, it had restaurants, it had barbershops, gift shops. It was kind of like a small floating town. Now that was the, the first class amenities. Um, second class passengers were more average men and women. Um, some of them had actually been booked as first class passengers on the Oceanic and the Adriatic, um, but they were transferred to the Titanic when the White Star Line canceled those voyages so that they would have enough coal to fuel the Titanic's furnaces. Um, in 1912, there was a coal strike, so there was a coal shortage going on. Um, second class cabins were nice, not as nice as first class cabins, um, and they could hold up to four people in them. And this is a third class cabin. So steerage or third class passengers were mainly immigrants from all over Europe. Um, they were on their way to America to, to live the American dream. 
um, third class cabins could hold as many as 10 people, um, which it's not, they weren't very large at all. So not, not super comfortable, but again, it was only for seven days. So each class had certain areas where they were allowed to be. So if you were a first class passenger, you had access to all of the first class um, lounges, um, which is what we're looking at here in these pictures, um, dining rooms, outside decks, things like that. But if you were a second class passenger, you were not allowed to go up onto into those first class areas. And same went, you know, for the other classes as well. You were supposed to stay with your class. Um, they even had separate staircases. All right, so who's ready to play? I've been talking a lot at you. You guys have been great so far. Um, so I hope you were paying attention. Um, so we're gonna play our first of three rounds of shuffleboard. Um, it's a really easy game to play. Um, we have a spinner. We're gonna spin and see whether we're gonna be asking you a three point question, a five point question, or a 10 point question. So go ahead and spin away. All right, so our first five point question is how many funnels on the Titanic actually worked? So option A is one, option B is two, option three, or C, excuse me, C is three, <laughs> um, or option D is four. So again, how many funnels on the Titanic actually worked? A, one, B, two, C, three, D, four. So go ahead and drop your answers into the chat. We'll give you guys a second to think about that. Um, All right. Keep going. We've got lots of answers coming in. Okay. All right. You guys ready for the answer for that one? So the answer was C. Only three of them worked. So remember I mentioned that that fourth one was put there to make the ship look bigger. That was the only reason it was there. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and go to that second question and we'll go ahead and get that spinner going again. Spin, spin, spin. All right, so our first three point question is on what date did the Titanic leave port for her maiden voyage? Was it A, October 8th, 1911, B, March 1st, 1912, or C, April 10th, 1912? So again, on what date did the Titanic leave port for her maiden voyage? A, October 8th, 1911, B, March 1st, 1912, or C, April 10th, 1912. All right, so again, drop those, your, your answer into the chat. We've got a lot of, lot of answers, lots of folks choosing their choice. And I can read that again one more time if you want. So on what date does Titanic leave port for her maiden voyage, October 8th? 1911 is option A. Uh, option B is March 1st, 1912. And option C is April 10th, 1912. All right, so the answer for this one is April 10th, 1912. Um, you'll remember that I said that in 1911, it was when it was um, the basic ship was was built and launched, but um, it didn't leave for its first voyage until April 10th, 1912. All right, let's go ahead and do another question. 
And another five point question. All right, you guys are racking up some good points today. Um, so how many stops did the Titanic make after leaving Southampton? A, no stops. B, one stop. C, two stops. Or D, three stops. So again, how many stops did Titanic make after leaving Southampton? A, no stops. B, one stop. Or C, two stops. D, three stops. This one's a hard one. <laughs> so that's one of our five point questions. So, got lots of different answers coming in. Mm -hmm. See some, looks like B and C are going back and forth quite a bit. All right, we'll give you a few more seconds to answer. All right, are you guys ready for the answer? It is C, it made two stops. So it, it uh, left Southampton and stopped in Cherbourg, France, which is where it picked up Margaret. Um, as well as other people. Um, and then a quick stop in Ireland, and then they were on their way to New York. All right. Let's go ahead and do another one. Ooh, yay, we finally got to a 10 point question. <laughs> These are some of my favorite because they're very hard. All right. So, what does RMS in the name RMS Titanic say? stand for A, Royal Military Ship, B, Royal Mail Steamer, C, Royal Military Steamer, or D, Royal Majesty's Ship. So again, what does, what does RMS in the name RMS Titanic stand for? A, Royal Military Ship, B, Royal Mail Steamer, C, Royal Military Steamer, or D, Royal Majesty's ship. All right. I can tell you that for a long time, I, I thought I, before I had, you know, all of this knowledge about Titanic, I thought it stood for one thing and it totally stands for something different. So, <laughs> so drop those responses into the chat for us. And we'll see. This one's a tough one. See lots of different We've got we've got A's, B's, C's, and D's coming in. Give you just another couple seconds to get your choice in there. All right. This one actually the answer is B. It was a Royal Mail steamer. Because remember, it had that contract to. Uh, transport mail between the United States and England. All right, I think we probably have time for maybe one more of this round. All right, another three-point question. Okay, so what class was Margaret Molly Brown in? A, first class, B, second class, C, third class, or D, steerage? So again, Margaret Molly Brown was in what class? A, first, B, second, C, third, D, steerage? You guys are getting this one pretty quickly. <laughs> I can tell you were paying attention. <laughs> All right. Lots of thought. You guys are typing furiously for this one. All right. So the answer for this one, which class was Margaret Molly Brown in? She was in A, first class. She was a first class passenger. All right. So great work, everybody. Um, we're going to continue on our voyage. Um, the first several days were, you know, nothing, nothing spectacular happened. Um, it was smooth sailing. 
Margaret wrote during this time that um, during the those few first few days, she sort of developed a routine that involved walking on the decks, dining, reading. Um, this wasn't her first trip, um, certainly across the the ocean, um, and it wasn't even her first trip with the captain. Um, and she was was confident that you know in his abilities that he was a good captain. So speaking of the captain, um, it was Captain Edward J. Smith. Um, he was the commander of the Titanic. Captain Smith was one of the best captains in the world and had been uh, with the White Star Line for 25 years. Um, many first class passengers would only sail on ships that he was captain of. Um, Margaret had sailed with him once before and this this journey on Titanic was actually supposed to be his last trip before retiring. And you guys probably know what this is. <laughs> so this is the iceberg. Um, on Sunday evening, April 14th, so remember they left on the 10th, so it's been four days, um, senior operator radio operator uh, Jack Phillips was working in the wireless room sending messages from passengers to their friends and relatives and, and things like that. Um, a, a wireless is a telegraph machine. Uh, um, it's able to send messages across large distances, kind of like texting today, um, only with some limitations. Um, he was really, Phillips was really far behind in his work because people could pay to send messages to the, to their loved ones and friends. Um, and the, the day before the transmitter, the wireless transmitter had actually broke it. And so he and Harold Bride, um, had repaired it themselves. And so they had all this catch up to do to get all these messages out. At 9.30 p.m., a uh, ship sent a warning of pack ice, icebergs, and field ice. So lots of lots of ice. Um, Phillips should have delivered these messages to the captain right away. Instead, he stuck it under a paperweight um, and didn't deliver it until later. Um, it was a calm, bitterly cold night. There was no moon. It was a cloudless sky, um, so it was dark. Um, the watch was almost over and there was nothing unusual happening um, as Titanic sped 22.5 knots. Um, it was just southeast of Newfoundland, um, a province in Canada. Um, and the lookout, um, his name was Frederick Fleet. He spotted the iceberg while on watch in the crow's nest. Um, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with that term, the crow's nest is a small area that's high up on the mast. Um, he called the bridge and told them iceberg right ahead. So first officer Murdoch ordered hard a starboard. Okay, throwing a lot of possibly unknown terms at you. So just real quick, what do you think hard a starboard means? Go ahead and just drop your answers into the chat um, and we'll see, see what you guys think that means. If you've seen the movie Titanic, you might have a clue, but <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, we've got some interesting things coming in. Um, so hard to starboard could mean stop. Uh, it could mean turn around, uh, turn left. Uh, yeah. So it actually, we'll, we'll give you a few more seconds. Keep putting those in there. Uh, okay. Yeah. So somebody said go right. <laughs> so, and that is correct. Um, so hard to start with means try to turn, um, try to turn, you know, the ship to the right. So. Um, so he stopped the engines, put them in reverse, but unfortunately it was too late. Um, at 11.40 p.m. on April 14th, 1912, the Titanic struck the iceberg that you see in this picture, or at least we believe this is the one that they struck. Um, when Murdoch ordered the ship to starboard, the Titanic's right side scraped along the, a large part of the, the iceberg underneath the water, um, because as we know, icebergs are actually bigger under the water than they are above. Um, it sustained several holes totaling 12 square feet, so about the size of a, a normal doorway. Um, few passengers took the situation seriously, you know, it was supposed to be an unsinkable ship. Um, 
And the response was anything but enthusiastic when the women and children were, were called to the lifeboats. People really weren't worried. Um, most thought the lifeboats were just being lowered just in case something went wrong. Um, some even refused to get into the lifeboats because they felt safer on the ship. Um, because again, this was supposed to be an unsinkable ship. All right, so if you were a man, your life depended on which side of the ship you happened to be on. Um, on the port side, so that's the left side, um, second officer light tiller um, was strictly women and children first. If you were a man, you could not get into a lifeboat. Um, on the starboard side, so again, the right side, first officer Murdoch, it was women and children, but if there wasn't any around, then he was filling them with men too, um, just to get them out to sea as quickly as possible. The lifeboats, as you can see from this picture, um, were designed to carry approximately 60 people, um, and there were only 20 of them. Regulations at the time only required 16 lifeboats on a ship. Titanic had 20 boats on board. Although Titanic's full passenger capacity was over 3,000 people, 3,170 passengers and crew, the boat was not full, so there were approximately 2,200 people on board that night. Um, Quick arithmetic tells us that the best, at best, only half of those people could be saved, um, just based on the number of lifeboats. Um, and sadly, in reality, the most of the lifeboats were only half full when they were launched. Um, one carried as many as 70 people, and another carried only 12. 18 of the 20 lifeboats were launched. Um, two more lifeboats floated off deck as the Titanic sank. It took less than three hours. Um, the ship sunk by its bow or nose and broke into two. Um, it sank at about 2.20 a.m. on April 15th, 1912, so 109 years ago today. Um, many passengers ended up jumping into the freezing ocean just before the ship sank. Um, only one lifeboat returned to pick up survivors. All the others were afraid that they'd be overturned by frantic people trying to climb in, um, climb aboard from the water. Uh, the Titanic went down with its captain, much of her crew, and much of the second and third class passengers, a total of 1,523 deaths. Survivors had to row towards the edge of the ice field that they were in to prevent, um, that was preventing rescue ships from entering um, the waters because they didn't know, they also didn't want to sink. All right, so real quick, true, far, true false poll for you. Um, the Titanic sinking is why there are lifeboat drills on cruises, et cetera. Um, if you've ever taken a cruise, you probably uh, might have an inkling about this. So go ahead and real quick tr drop that true false or TF, with, you know, if you want to make it quick, um, into the chat. Um, looks pretty, you know, we've got lots of trues, fair number of falses. Um, so the reason why is that you do lifeboat drills early on when you take a take a cruise or something like that um, is because of the sinking of the Titanic. Um, laws were changed because of how terrible of a disaster this was. All right, you guys ready to play some more? Let's play another round. <laughs> I know we're going super fast, so hopefully you guys are catching all of this. Um, so let's go ahead and do that first spin. And our first question is a 10 point question. I love this. Um, so what was the largest number of people carried in a lifeboat? A, 70, B, 60, C, 50, or D, 40? Um, so again, which what was the largest number of people carried in a lifeboat? A, 70, B, 60, C, 50, or D, 40? So drop your answers real quick into the chat. I want to make sure we have plenty of time, so we're going to come through this round a little bit faster. All right. So you guys were paying attention. So option A, there, the most people found in a lifeboat was 70, and the fewest was 12. Okay, spin away. All right, so our first three-point question for this round is, 
what did Titanic's lifeboats have to row? Why did, excuse me, why did Titanic's lifeboats have to row to get close to the rescue ship? Um, why couldn't the rescue ship come to them? A, there was too much ice for the ship to come into the ice field. B, it was too dark for them to see. C, it was too cold where the Titanic sank. Or D, the Titanic sank too far away from any other ship. So again, why did Titanic's lifeboats have to row to the rescue ship as opposed to the rescue ship coming all the way to them? Um, A, there was too much ice. B, it was too dark. C, it was too cold. Or D, it sank too far away. All right, so if you remember, they had all those, those warnings about ice fields and icebergs and ice flows. Um, there was too much ice. So option A, there was too much ice for the ships to come close enough um, without worrying about sinking themselves. All right. Another three point question. All right, so Titanic was carrying approximately how many people when it hit the iceberg? Option A, 1,500. B, 2,200. C, 2,800. Or D, 3,200. So Titanic was carrying approximately how many people when it hit the iceberg? A, 1,500. B, 2,200. C, 2,800. Or D, 3,200. So drop those answers into the chat for me. Oh, you guys, some of you were paying attention. Love it. Got it. Quite, quite a, quite a uh, debate between B and D here. So again, we're going to kind of move through this round a little bit more quickly. Um, so the answer is the Titanic was carrying approximately 2,200 people when it hit the iceberg. So option B. All right. Go ahead and spin again. <laughs> I guess we'll call it a five point question. <laughs> oh, this is a funny spinner. All right, another three point question. So who was the captain of the Titanic? I've thrown a lot of names at you, so we'll see if you guys get this one or not. So A, Captain Edward J. Smith. B, Captain Frederick Fleet, C, Captain Char Charles Lake Toller, or D, Captain Arthur Hitchens. So who was captain of the Titanic? A, Edward Smith, B, Frederick, Frederick Fleet, C, Charles Lake Toller, or D, Arthur Hitchens. All right, we've got a lot of answers coming in. All right, so option for this one was option A, the captain of the Titanic was Edward Smith. All right, let's, we probably have time for maybe a couple, like one more right for this one, and then we'll move on. 10 points, yay. I'm telling you, these are my favorite questions. <laughs> All right, so according to regulations, the Titanic did not carry the correct number of lifeboats. How many more or fewer lifeboats did she carry than regulations called for? So this requires remembering some numbers that I told you. So option A, she had four more. Option B, she had two fewer. Option C, eight more. Or option D, six fewer. So I'll repeat that again because it's it's a lot. So according to regulations, the Titanic did not carry the correct number of lifeboats. How many more or fewer did she carry than regulations called for? So option A, four more. Option B, two fewer. Option C, eight more. Or option D, six fewer. Answers are coming in a little bit more slowly for this one. It requires not only remembering numbers, but doing some quick math as well. So I'll give you just a second to think about this one. 
All right, again, I want to make sure we have plenty of time. So we're going to go ahead and the option, the answer for this one is actually option A. They had four more than they were required to. They were only required to have 16 and they had 20. All right, so let's continue our story with what happened after the ship sank that night. Um, after receiving a distress signal from the Titanic at 12, 10 a.m., the liner Carpathia, under command of Captain Arthur H. Rostrum, came from 58 miles away through ice-covered waters to rescue the first lifeboat at 4.10 a.m. on the morning of April 15th. Um, the Carpathia had to steer around six icebergs to reach the area where the lifeboats were. So again, those lifeboats needed to come to them. Otherwise, the same fate might have waited um, for the Carpathia. Um, the last lifeboat was picked up at 8.30 a.m. So it was a long night for people. So there was a lot of confusion on land. Um, there, until the Carpathia actually got into New York on April 18, 1912, no one really knew who had survived and who hadn't. Um, at one point, a lot of newspapers were reporting that everybody was safe. Um, some were saying that everybody had died. Some were at numbers all over the place in between. Um, the wireless or on, operators on board Carpathia were swamped with incoming requests for this information, as well as messages um, from the survivors trying to say, you know, I'm okay. Um, as a result, the, the newspapers often contradict each other, um, like you can see here. Um, this was a time when we didn't have things like cell phones or internet to be able to quickly and um, accurately communicate things. Um, the truest headline is this one, which is from the New York American. Um, of the 2,200 or 2,228 passengers and crew, a total of 705 were saved. Margaret Brown had been dropped into lifeboat number six, and this is a picture of that lifeboat um, as it was being lowered. Quartermaster Hitchens was the only man in the lifeboat. Um, he believed that women were useless and couldn't row. Um, Margaret and others in the boat um, disagreed with this and insisted that women be allowed to row to keep warm. Once on board the Carpathia, Margaret helped make lists of survivors and helped raise funds for the poorer passengers um, from the wealthier passengers. She used her knowledge of five different languages, she spoke five different languages, to interpret for those immigrant passengers. Once they reached New York, um, Margaret refused any passengers to leave the ship until she was sure they had money in their pocket, a place to go, um, and clothes on their back. So after this event, Margaret was given a nickname. Um, which of these was it? Was it A, Ice Queen, B, Unsinkable, C, Captain Molly, or D, Unlucky? Go ahead and drop into the chat real quick which one you think it is. Um, I love this poll. I think it is so much fun. <laughs> so oh, you guys are all, all over the board on this one. All right. Again, I want to make sure we have time for everything. So we're going to move pretty quickly. So I'll give you just a few more seconds to drop your answers into the chat. So we have plenty of time to keep playing. Um, the answer is B. She's known as the unsinkable Margaret Brown or unsinkable Molly Brown. Uh, when asked by a reporter why she had survived, she reportedly responded, typical brown luck, we're unsinkable. Um, and that's how she earned her nickname. Uh, Margaret actually later, um, only about a month later, presented Captain Rostron and the crew of the Carpathia with um, some some things as a thank you. So she gave Captain Rostron this silver loving cup is what it's called that you see him holding in this photograph. Um, she gave it to him for his heroic efforts saving the, the survivors of the Titanic. Um, Margaret became president of the Titanic Survivors Committee for the rest of her life. Um, after the Titanic sank, there was an inquiry 
um, both by the US and, and in England about what had happened. Um, and maritime law changed to require enough lifeboats for 25% more people than were on board. So if you're carrying a, a thousand people, you need to have enough lifeboats for um, 1,250 people. Margaret was not actually allowed to testify though because she was a woman. So Titanic was just off the coast of Newfoundland when it hit the iceberg. Um, this is a, a map of its journey. It's a little backwards. The white is actually the ocean, uh, <laughs> but it works. Um, thus, the, the wreckage lies off the coast of the Canadian, this Canadian province, about 12,500 feet down on the ocean floor. So you can see they were almost to New York. It's really, it was really sad. Um, the wreckage of the Titanic was actually discovered in 1985 by Robert Ballard um, using sonar techniques, as well as the a deep sea vessel called the Argo. So it was a deep sea robot. It's in that top right picture there. Um, the bow of the ship, um, again, it's 12,500 feet below on the ocean floor. Um, you remember, I may remember I mentioned that it had split into to two. So the two, piece, two pieces, fell and sank um, apart from each other. Um, the bow, which is that middle picture, is largely intact and recognizable um, on the ocean floor where it sits. The stern landed about 2,000 feet away from it and was pretty much destroyed as it, as it fell. Um, because the ship is sitting in salt water, it is deteriorating. Um, if you look in that lower left-hand picture there, you'll see some um, rusty looking things. Um, those that kind of look like icicles, those are actually called rusticles. Um, they're formed by a bacteria that's eating the iron um, that the ship is made out of. Over time, there are going to be more and more of these rusticles, and it will look less and less like a ship. Um, scientists who have studied the deterioration of the ship estimate that about by 2050, so not that far off, um, the ship may no longer be recognizable. Okay. So now you've heard the entire tale <laughs> of Titanic. So let's see how much you remember. Um, so we are going to uh, do one last round of questions. All right, our first 10 point question is... All right, so approximately how many people were rescued from the Titanic? So option A is 500, option B is 700, option C is 900, and option D is 1,200. So again, how many people were rescued from Titanic? A, 500, B, 700, C, 900, or D? 1200. So real quick, because I know we're running out of time. So that answer, correct answer is B. It was approximately 700 people. All right, let's do another one. Three points. All right, so our first three point question is, why did women in lifeboat number six insist on being allowed to row? One, or option A, to give the men a rest. B, anything men can do, women could do. Or C, to keep warm. These are, these are some fun, fun answers, you guys. <laughs> All right, so again, real quickly, we'll give you a few more seconds. So why did women in lifeboat number six insist on being allowed to row? It was not to give men a rest. And it's true that anything men could do, women could do, but really it was to keep warm. So option C. All right, let's do one more. Another 10 point question. All right, so let's do, when did the Carpathia land in New York with the survivors? So this was kind of mentioned in passing, see if you remember it. So A, April 15th, B, April 18th, C, April 21st, or D, April 25th. So again, option A is April 15th, B is April 18th, C is April 21st, 
or D, April 25th. So when did the Carpathia land in New York with the survivors? Got a lot of A's, a lot of B's. So the correct answer for this one is option B, April 18th. So it took him a few days to get to New York after picking everyone up. All right, let's maybe do one more. No? <laughs> Last one, Haley. <laughs> Oop. All right, another time I question. <laughs> Margaret Brown presented the Silver Loving Cup to this man, the captain of the Carpathia, in recognition for his heroic efforts. A, Frederick Fleet, B, Arthur Rostron, C, President Wilson, or D, Edward Smith. So who did Margaret present that Silver Loving Cup to? Frederick Fleet, B, Arthur Rostron, C, President Wilson, or D, Edward Smith. Looks like you guys were paying attention. It is Option B, Captain Arthur H. Rostrum. Okay. <laughs> All right. So why do you think people love learning about the Titanic? Um, as I mentioned, um, laws were changed as a result of the disaster. Um, and one of the things that came about was the establishment of the International Ice Patrol. Um, and it led also led to requirements, um, improvements in, in revisions of, you know, life-saving equipment and regulations aboard um, ships, like the number of lifeboats and things like that. So why, why do people love learning about this ship 109 years later? Um, I'd love to hear what you guys have to have to say. So if you want to respond to that, go ahead and drop that into the chat. Um, and we'll see what, what, uh, what you guys have to say. Um, God, it's, it was a big, a big disaster, which is true, which always fascinates people. Um, that it was supposed to be this unsinkable ship. And it was so luxurious. Lots of famous people died. Yeah, there are a lot of reasons to be interested in in this ship, um, even even after it's gone down. Um, people are still debating about what to do about um, the remains of the ship. In fact, so okay. All right. Well, I want to make sure we finish on time. So <laughs> we have our fabulous bobblehead there. All right, everyone. So it does look like about that time. We're going to go ahead and take that quick selfie before we maybe hang for just two or three minutes for a quick question or two. We've gotten a lot of really wonderful questions from students. And as a quick reminder for everyone, if you tag the Molly Brown House and you tag Varsity Tutors, you'll be entered to win that Titanic prize pack, as well as a three month member membership to VT Plus. And again, as a quick reminder with VT Plus, uh, we have classes available on topics from things like math, magic, acting, archaeology, dinosaurs, debate, and everything in between. And as a subscriber, you can take as many of those classes as you'd like. So you can focus on things you know you love and discover new passions along the way. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hand it back off to Heather. We'll get that bobble up there and pose for a selfie. <laughs> She's my favorite. <laughs> Try not to move. <laughs> All right. I think we've had an opportunity. And again, if you guys didn't snap that photo just yet, we're going to hang for just another moment or two for one or two quick questions. We actually had a whole bunch of questions that as they were coming in, uh, you answered quite okay. quickly. <laughs> So that works out super, super well. We've gotten a lot of these. Uh, so we've gotten a little bit around this idea that the Titanic has shaped or changed the way that we go about maritime safety. And I'd love to hear a little bit more around what sorts of processes have changed. I know we talked a little bit about the cruise ship that some mm -hmm. students may be familiar with. What other changes came about because of this event? So, so the big one was the number of lifeboats um, and the number of like life jackets that you have to have on board. Um, 
you know, again, Margaret wasn't actually allowed to testify about her experience, um, but you can read what she wrote um, because Margaret being Margaret, she uh, she went ahead and, and wrote it anyway, and it was published in the Newport um, Herald. Um, and we, we have a, a copy of that on our on our blog on our website. So, um, but th those were the big ones, the ice patrol and then the, um, the lifeboats and life jackets. That's wonderful. And I'm sure that even, even if students are maybe a little more excited to get to their vacation, they can understand the importance <laughs> of things like safety regulations and instructions. Uh, now, lots of questions around the Titanic movie. Perhaps students are familiar with how that comes into play. So was Molly Brown in the Titanic movie? Uh, were the characters in the movie real? Was the movie accurate? All sorts of questions. <laughs> Maybe you could speak just a moment to how the movie relates back to what we've had to talk about. Yeah, so, so Margaret is in the movie. Um, if, you, if you know who Kathy Bates is, she's the Kathy Bates character. Um, she's not entirely accurately portrayed, but um, you know, at least they do say that her name was Margaret and not Molly, because Molly, she actually never went by Molly. Um, but Jack and Rose were not real. Um, I hate to break it to you. <laughs> we get people coming to the museum all the time that ask that question. But, um, you know, there are there are certain things about the movie that were accurate and, and well done. Um, and then other things that are, you know, not as good. Um, so it's, it's a mixed bag, but it's a fun movie. I mean, I enjoy it. <laughs> Absolutely. So maybe not 100% true to uh, to reality, but some some characters that were real along the way, if not so accurate. A yep. uh, couple of students, and I know we'll we're running a little low on time, so we'll let you out of here in just a moment. A uh, couple of students, though, interested in knowing what inspired your interest in in this story, in the Titanic, or in Molly Brown specifically. Yeah. So I I really love Margaret. Um, she was. Uh, a strong woman. Um, she came from, you know, she was actually born not wealthy um, and got very lucky in her life. And she continued to help people. Um, she didn't just take that money and, you know, spend her life having a great time, which she could have. Um, but she also, you know, like I mentioned, she was part of the Titanic Survivors Committee for the rest of her life. Um, so she was always doing things to you know, here in Denver, she helped build parks and playgrounds. She helped reform our juvenile justice system. Um, she was a suffragist. She, you know, stood up for the miners um, uh, against the Rockefeller Corporation. Um, you know, she was always looking out for other people um, and, and looking to help them. And so I, I find that very inspiring. Wow, absolutely. Certainly much, much more to uh, to Margaret Brown's story than I'm sure we were able to hear about today. So yeah. I know we'll have some resources uh, that students can continue to learn more. Uh, so I do want to make sure we wrap up our class for today and that we're conscious of your time. So any just closing thoughts for students before we wrap things up for today? I mean, there's so much about Titanic that you can learn um, and so much about Margaret that you can learn. And we certainly couldn't cover it all in an hour, um, but I encourage you to to keep learning and keep asking questions. And, you know, we do have some great resources on our website if you want to check those out. Um, but she's she's a fascinating person um, and she did a lot. So um, and there were a lot of people on Titanic that that have fascinating stories as well that that survived. Um, Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for hanging an extra couple of minutes to answer some of those student questions. And thank you again, once again, to Heather, to the Molly Brown House Museum, and also to all of you tuning in live who participated in our live interactive game, who had so many wonderful questions for us. We hope to see you in one of our many other class offerings soon. And in the meantime, don't forget to post those selfies and tag us at Varsity Tutors as well as the Molly Brown House to win. Alrighty. Thank you so much, everyone.